What's up everyone? Welcome back to Amazing Dinosaurs. Today we are checking out a collection of 40 of some of the greatest Jurassic World figures. And as a bonus, I've got these four new figures that we'll check out in a little bit. For now, let's get started with the biggest figure in this collection. This is the Battle Damage Indominus Rex. This figure stands even taller than many of my T-Rex figures, and it has a button at the bottom of its tail for the chomping action, and a button on its back for the battle damage activation. Next up is the Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus. This figure is almost as big as the Indominus Rex and features posable arms, legs, tail, and head. And there's a button at the top of the head to activate the jaw. This is the mighty Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus. It's around the same size as the Spinosaurus figure, but this figure has two attack buttons. The first is on its back that swings its whole torso back and forth and then a second button underneath its tail to activate just the jaw. Over here is the classic battle damage T-Rex figure. Now this figure doesn't have any battle damage that gets revealed, but you can see that there's battle damage slashes painted all over its body and even on its chin too. Plus it's fully posable and has a button at the top of its head for the chomping action. Here is a Carnotaurus figure, one of my favorite dinosaurs. It has the bright orange and red body with the brown on the top. It has the tiny front arms, and this figure features the tail that controls the head and the jaw. That's pretty cool. Here's another T-Rex figure, and this one specifically is actually pretty expensive nowadays. It originally came in this jungle green coloring with the black detailing along the top and features a fully posable body with the button at the top of its head for the chomping and roaring. This one's a slightly smaller figure. This is a Carcharodontosaurus figure. It too has the fully posable body and it has a single action button on its back for the chomping action. I've got another T-Rex right here. This one is a very classic looking one with the soft brown on the sides and the darker brown on the top. It has the fully posable body and just like the others, the button on its head for the chomping action. Next up is a smaller Allosaurus figure. This specific figure comes in the dark blue and tan coloring and it has posable arms, legs, and tail. And it has this special slide lever action for sound effects and for chomping the jaw. And here is another T-Rex in the classic brown coloring with some light gray detailing. This one is actually another battle damage T-Rex. So just like the Indominus Rex, you can press this button to reveal the battle damage. And on this figure, instead of having a button at the top of its head for roaring, you can just open and close its mouth manually. Let's go ahead and open up one of the new figures. This is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. Now this might be my first Dilophosaurus in more muted coloring. Most of my figures are super bright. This one is mostly gray and with the white body. And what I really like is that this Dilophosaurus has an attack feature when you move its tail. Check that out. Up next here is the Tarbosaurus. This figure comes in the gray coloring with the darker gray along the top and a bunch of spikes running down its entire back. And the brightest part is underneath its chin and on its neck. And like the Carnotaurus that we saw earlier, the tail actually moves the head and controls the jaw too. Here is a Concavenator figure. This is a very unusual looking dinosaur, primarily because of this weird spine running down only half of its back. And not only that, but it has a bright purple face and the bright red spine. And has one action button for the jaw and one action button for the tail. This is a Sarcosuchus figure. I believe there are currently two versions of this dinosaur figure. This one is in the light blue with the purple, red, and orange. And you can use its tail to move its head around, up and down, side to side, and open and close its jaw too. Now here's a classic dinosaur. This is a Triceratops figure. This version comes in the light gray coloring and has two action buttons on its back, one for moving the head and the other for moving the tail back and forth. Let's check out our next brand new figure. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Roar Strikers Pteranodon. Now I have a few other Pteranodon figures of this size, but this is the first one with this coloring that I have. Most of its body is this dark brown coloring. It has the yellow detailing along its wings, and the best part is it has some bright blue along its face. Plus, this Pteranodon has a pretty unique action button. When you press it, it moves its head up and down. 
that's pretty cool because the button on the other Pteranodon figures usually just flap its wings up and down, so it's cool to have one that moves its head. Next up is a Sukumimus figure. I believe Jurassic World has two versions of this dinosaur. This one is in the dark blue with the yellow accent over its body, and it features poseable arms, legs, and a tail, and a single action button on its back for the chomping action. Here is the Albertosaurus figure. Now Jurassic World might have two or three different versions of this one. I know there is one that has battle damage right here on the side, but this is the classic version. Its body is green with the accent of orange and it features poseable arms and the legs and the tail that controls the head and the jaw. Here is the Majingasaurus dinosaur. It's a bit smaller than many of the other figures, and like the Carnotaurus, has tiny little front arms, but it has some pretty cool coloring. Most of its body is dark green, but it has this yellow and this blue around its face. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. Here's a figure that I'm sure you recognize. This is the Scorpios Rex. And this figure is pretty decently sized, not quite as large as many of the T-Rex figures, but a lot larger than many of the rest. It's got the black body with the yellow underbelly and two action buttons, one to operate the jaw and the other to slash the arms. Plus this figure's tail is actually spring-loaded, so you can swing it back and forth to hit other dinosaurs with those poisonous quills. Time for another new figure. This is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Atrociraptor. This is the first Atrociraptor in my collection that has this type of coloring, dark green in the back, and then a yellow green all along the front. That is pretty unique. And even though it's a pretty small figure, it has an action button on its back to move its head up and down. Here's another Triceratops figure, but this one's a bit more special because it's from the Hammond collection. So it has a lot more detailing and better coloring all over its body. Plus it is super poseable. Here's an older dinosaur figure. This is the Metriacanthosaurus dinosaur figure. It's smaller than many of the other carnivore figures that I have, and this version comes in the yellow on the sides and the dark green on top, plus there's a single action button to move its jaw. This crazy looking Velociraptor is from the Amber Collection, so it's a lot larger than many of my other Velociraptor figures, and a whole lot more poseable too. Check it out, you can even move the huge claws on its feet up and down. All in all, this is a pretty epic looking Velociraptor. Speaking of Velociraptors, I've actually got this new Hammond Collection Velociraptor as part of the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary. Now this figure is a whole lot smaller than the Amber Collection Velociraptor we just saw, but it's still extremely poseable like the Amber Collection, and also has some pretty cool coloring too. It's got the yellow underbelly, the green sides, a white stripe, a red tipped tail, and some cool coloring on its face. Here is a basic Spinosaurus figure. It has the same coloring as the Legacy Collection Spinosaurus, which is a whole lot larger. But since it's the basic version, it's quite a bit smaller and you can only move its arms, its legs, and its tail. Here is our first Baryonyx of the collection. This specific version has the brown body with the dark blue on top and the reflective blue all along the top of its head. Plus it has one action button to operate the jaw. Here is an Endoraptor figure, and I believe this one is from the Fallen Kingdom era. Kind of like the Hammond Collection figures, this dinosaur is very poseable, and it doesn't have any action buttons, but you gotta love those bright red eyes. I've got another Allosaurus figure here. This version is in the gray with yellow accenting on its body, and it has poseable arms and legs and a single action button on its back for the sound effects. Now we're getting to the smaller figures. This is a Miragaya figure. It stands on all four legs, has spines like a Spinosaurus kind of, and has these two huge spikes coming out of its back. Here's another Indominus Rex figure, but this one is a lot smaller than the first one we saw. It has a little battle damage on the side and you can pose the arms and legs and you can use the tail to move the head and the neck. Up next is an Atrociraptor figure. This one is from Jurassic World Dominion and is the battle damage edition. Check that out right there. You can turn the battle damage on and off with the click of a button. Here's another Atrociraptor figure. This one is a lot brighter colored and is actually in a crawling pose. So it's staying close to the ground. 
I believe this next figure is part of the Dino Tracker series. This is a new Herrerasaurus figure. It has the brown back, the orange middle, and the light brown head. And it has a single action button on its back to operate its head. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure, pretty similar to the one that I opened up a little bit earlier. As you can see, it is a lot more brightly colored, but it still has the same cool attack feature. There's a few winged dinosaurs in here. I believe this first one is called a Dimorphodon, and it has a huge head and a smaller body, and most of its body is this gray color. The other winged dinosaur in here is another Pteranodon. This one is mostly yellow and brown, but it looks like it has some really cool reflective gold coloring on its face. And finally, I've got a few more Velociraptor figures. This first green one right here actually has an attack button on its back for a slashing movement. There's also this gray Velociraptor with the yellow accenting on the top of its body. And then finally, this all yellow Velociraptor with the brown accenting along the top. Plus, it has a battle damage feature on the side that you can open and close. Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Jurassic World Apex Predators, meaning that they are at the top of the food chain. And I've actually got a brand new Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Jurassic World Legacy Collection that we're gonna open up first. Here is the brand new T-Rex and the baby T-Rex. I already have one of these T-Rexes, but I think this is the first of the green T-Rex that I have. So I'm super excited to check this one out. As you can see, most of its body is a dark green color. It's got the lighter underbelly and it's got the black detailing right along the top. And it's about as adjustable as my other T-Rex figures. So you can move the ankles, you can move the legs into different positions, move the tail around. And then the neck, you can also move around so it can look in different directions. And of course, there's the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. This is a really cool looking figure, and I'm sure that the T-Rex is one of the best known apex predators. Here we've got a dinosaur that you can't find in real life, but I'm sure it would be an apex predator if it was real. This is the Indominus Rex, and this is one of the big figures. You can see that it's pretty adjustable. You can move the legs into different positions, and that causes the dinosaur to look up and down. You can see it moves its neck back and forth like that. This figure also comes with the two action buttons, one for the chomping, and then one on the back for the slashing action. This is another T-Rex. This one is mostly brown. It's got the dark brown on the top, lighter brown on the sides, and then a tan on the bottom. And this T-Rex figure has a tearing action, actually. So when you press this button on its back, it tears just like that. And there's also a second action button that swings the tail back and forth. Here is a Carcharodontosaurus with blue coloring on its body and the orange and brown detailing on the top. This also has one action button for chomping. <laughs> Plus, you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail as well. Next up, we've got two Endoraptors. And obviously, these dinosaurs aren't from real life, but if they were, I can guarantee you that they would be an apex predator. I just remember them from the Jurassic World movie. These were some of the most feared dinosaurs. This first Endoraptor is a more basic figure. You can only move the arms, the legs, and the tail, but you can adjust the neck or open and close the mouth. But on this second Endoraptor figure, this one is super adjustable. It's got a bunch of points of articulation. Again, it's a double jointed tail. You can bend the knees, you can bend the ankles. You can adjust the arms fully, and you can open and close the mouth, too. Right over here, we've got two Sucomimuses. This one is a blue with yellow detailing, and this one is yellow with brown detailing on the top. This one has two action buttons, one for chomping and one for the tail. This Sucomimus only has one action button that activates the jaw. 
right up top here, we've got a smaller figure, but still a fearsome predator. This is a Baryonyx. It's got the green sides and belly and the brown top. The arms and legs can articulate and move around. And there's an action button on its back for chomping. Back here, actually, we've got another Baryonyx. This one has a brown body and sides with a dark gray blue coloring on the top and the bright orange detailing right on the top of its face. And just like the other figure, the legs and the arms can move too. Here is an older Jurassic World figure. You can see that this is another T-Rex. It's got the full tan body and on its head, it's got some gray detailing. It's got those yellow eyes and an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Here we've got a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Yang Truanosaurus. It's got the green body, a lighter yellow underbelly. It's got some brown detailing along the top and then that bright orange piece right on its head. This figure is pretty adjustable with its arms and its legs. You can see that moving the legs dips its head down like that. And the tail controls the jaw and can move the neck around too. Back here is another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. This is a Scorpio Venator. This figure has an orange belly and sides. It's got some white detailing right along the top and a dark gray blue color right along the top of its head. This figure is fairly adjustable. You can move the arms and the legs. And when you push down on its legs, it does a chomping action. This one is another T-Rex. This T-Rex though is the battle damage edition. It's got the button on top that you can use to turn on and off the battle damage, which is a pretty awesome feature. This figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the ankles, can move the legs up and down. The tail only has one joint in it though, but the neck of this T-Rex is really adjustable. You can have them look in all directions and you can open and close its mouth really easily. This is a Carnotaurus figure. It's got the clay red body with the darker detailing spots on the sides and the brown right along the top. You can see that the Carnotaurus has a lot of bumps and ridges and that spine right there as well. And with this figure, the tail controls the head and there's a button as well to open and close its mouth. Here's another newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. And I think this is one of my favorite newest dinosaur figures. This is the Ragasaurus. This figure also has a chomping action when you press down on the legs and you can adjust its arms, its legs, and even twist its tail around a little bit. I love this dinosaur's head. You've got the horn right at the top and you've got this really cool smaller spine right on its neck, these spikes. It's really cool. Here we have another very well-known apex predator. This is a Velociraptor. This specific one is actually Velociraptor Charlie from the Amber Collection. So this figure is very adjustable. It can move all the different parts of its arms and legs, and you can adjust its head quite a bit as well too. And it's even got this headpiece right behind its face too. This is another ginormous T-Rex, and this T-Rex is pretty adjustable as well. As you can see, you can move the arms up and down, you can adjust the leg position, and instead of moving the neck and face up here, you actually can control it with the tail by swiveling it. This is another Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This one is Velociraptor Echo. This Velociraptor has the light brown coloring as well as the dark black right on top. And just like the other Amber Collection Velociraptor, it is very adjustable on all different parts of its body. You can even move the claws on its feet up and down. Back over here, we've got a smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an older Jurassic World figure. It's got the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And this figure is fairly adjustable as well. You can move the legs a little bit, you can move the arms just a bit and the tail controls the mouth and the neck too. We've got a few more awesome looking Baryonyxes in here. This first one has a slide action for different roaring sound effects. And this Baryonyx doesn't have any buttons on it, but you can use the tail to move the head around. Right over here is a well-known predator from Jurassic World. Once again, it isn't a real dinosaur, but I can guarantee this would be an apex predator. This 
is this Scorpios Rex. This figure has two action buttons on its back, one for the mouth and one for the claws. And the rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs quite a bit and you can adjust the neck to have it look around. And the tail is spring-loaded too, so you can fling the tail back and forth with those poisonous quills. Back here is a huge water dinosaur that I'm sure you recognize from the first Jurassic World movie. This is the Mosasaurus. This figure is ginormous. It's got a dark blue body on the top and then a white underbelly. And all over its body, you can actually see these like white specks, a little bit of detailing. And there's a few things that you can move on this figure. You can move the fins around, you can swivel the tail back and forth, and you can open and close the jaw, which is a pretty big jaw, I'd say. Probably fit a few small dinosaurs in there. Ah, here's another popular apex predator. This is the Spinosaurus. Did you know that the Spinosaurus is the largest known carnivorous dinosaur that existed? These were even bigger than T-Rexes. This figure has an adjustable tail. The legs are pretty movable, as well as the ankles. You can move the arms up and down, and you can actually adjust the neck quite a bit as well too. Here is another awesome T-Rex Predator. This looks to be very similar as the first T-Rex that I unboxed in this video, but with different coloring. See, it's got the brown body and the darker brown on top. And just like the other T-Rex, adjustable tail, move the legs and the arms, and you can move the head around too. Here's another dinosaur from the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. This is a Quetzalcoatlus. I didn't really know how big these dinosaurs were until I saw them in the new Jurassic World movie. These things were huge and they took down that plane. This is a Ceratosaurus. I think we actually have another one with different coloring. This one is a dark green color with black detailing on the top. And this one is a light gray with red and a darker gray detailing on the top as well. And they both have that slide action button for different sound effects and different roars. I think the sound effects are the same though. This one's an interesting looking dinosaur. This is a Cryolophosaurus. Look at that interesting crowning on the top of its head. This Cryolophosaurus has a dark blue body with white, red, and bright orange detailing. And you can move the arms, you can move the legs, and you can use the tail to move the head around. Here is another mighty Carnotaurus, the red side and the dark, it's almost like a purple color on the top. This dinosaur has an adjustable tail and adjustable legs and arms. And there's a button on the top for the chomping action. Ah, here's a species I don't think we've seen in this collection yet. This is an Allosaurus. It's got the dark green body with the red and white detailing. See, it's got those spikes right along its spines up top. And you can adjust the arms and the legs and the tail. And it's got the slide action button for different roars and chomps. This bright red dinosaur is a Metriacanthosaurus. It's a pretty interesting looking one. It's smaller than most of the other figures. It's got the bright orange detailing on the top of its head and the action button on its back for chomping. Next up, we've got, I believe, a Majungasaurus. This is a super colorful dinosaur. It's got the dark green, yellow, and blue on its neck. It's got those teal eyes. And like many of the other dinosaur figures, you can use the tail to move the head and neck around. This is an Albertosaurus with the Battle Damage Edition. As you can see, it's got two different types of battle damage. One that's right there on the top of the plastic and one that you can actually open up. This has the stomach and a ribs that you can close down and then the skin that you can do to cover all of the battle damage. That's pretty cool. The rest of the figure is pretty adjustable too. You can move the legs, arms, and tail as well as the neck and you can open and close the mouth manually. Over here is the Carcharodontosaurus with a blue body and orange and brown detailing. Look at all those spikes right along its spine too. It's interesting how they're all different heights. With this figure, you can move the arms, legs, and tail, and there's an action button on top 
for chomping. Here is another Allosaurus with different coloring and different actions too. Check out those spikes right along its spine. You can see the two action buttons right here. One for the mouth and one for the arms. And I think we actually have one more Allosaurus in here with different coloring. This one is gray with yellow detailing. You can only move the arms and legs in this figure aside from the action button on its back that controls its mouth. Right over here is another Albertosaurus. This figure is about medium sized and it does not have any battle damage like the one we saw earlier, but it's still pretty adjustable. You can move the arms, the legs, and you can use the tail to control the face. Here is another Carnotaurus. This one is a newer figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. As you can see, it's got the broken horn in the front and this figure is smaller but pretty adjustable. You can move the legs, the arms, twist the tail, and you can move the head and jaw around too. Here are a few small Dilophosaurus figures. This first one is mostly gray with red detailing and an action button on the tail that activates the frills. The second one is a bit more brightly colored. It has a green body and two different tones of orange, as well as the action button to activate the frills. And last but not least, we've got a bunch of smaller Velociraptor figures. Oh, actually, this is another baby T-Rex, just like we saw at the beginning of the video. But the rest of these figures are all Velociraptors. So let's check them out one by one. First, we've got the tan and brown Velociraptor. This one has a slashing action, spring-loaded torso, so it swings back and forth. This Velociraptor has a brown and yellow body with battle damage that you can open and close on the side. This next Velociraptor has a red and dark purple body, and you can move the arms, legs, and tail, as well as the mouth, but there's no special features on this figure. And these last two figures are similar in movement, but with different coloring. It's got the blue body with the yellow and gold coloring. This one has a dark brown color with orange on the top. This is a collection of 100 Jurassic World figures, and I'm gonna be showing you all of them today. Let's get started with this giant Spinosaurus figure. This specific figure is actually from the Legacy Collection, and they don't make this one anymore, so it's pretty hard to find. It's got the dark green coloring, different than all the other Spinosaurus figures, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Next, we've got a big Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got a light brown body. Its arms, its legs, its tail, and its head are adjustable. And there's a button for chomping. Next up, we've got another T-Rex figure. This one's pretty similar to the one that we just saw, except it's got some slightly darker coloring, darker brown on the top, and of course, the jaw chomping button. Over here is an herbivore dinosaur. This is the Pentaceratops. It's got a huge variety of horns on its head and on its frill as well. And it's got two action buttons, one to move the head up and down and one to swing the torso back and forth. Moving right along here, we've got the Sound Surge Carnotaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's check out these sound effects. Up next is a figure that I bought pretty recently, actually. This is the Hammond Collection Concavenator. Check out that really cool coloring with the orange fading into the brown and the blue, and the orange and red stripes along the top. Up in front here, we've got another giant T-Rex figure. This one is a bright orange color, and it has the same movements and actions as the T-Rexes that we saw earlier. This is an Indominus Rex figure, but it's actually not made by Hasbro. It's made by a model company, so it looks a lot different and it has a lot more detail than many of the Hasbro figures. I love those little spikes running along its back and on the top of its head. Right next to that, we've got a weird looking dinosaur. This is the Sarcosuchus. It's got a super short and super long body. It's got some really cool spikes that run all the way down its back to its tail. And you can use the tail to control the head and chomp the jaw too. Aww. This next one is an Oranosaurus from Hasbro. I believe this is an herbivore dinosaur. Definitely doesn't look like a scary predator. And it's got some cool coloring on its body. Plus an action button right on the side to move its head up and down. 
I've got a super bright dinosaur in here. This is a Triceratops. It looks a lot less realistic than many of my other figures, but it's still pretty cool. It's got some red on the top and the blue. Kind of looks like a baby Triceratops. Way in the back here, we've got another Indominus Rex figure, but this one looks quite a bit different. It's got really short legs and a giant head. This is from the Rowdy Roars collection, and it actually has a few different actions. You can get it to shut its mouth, and you can use the tail to hold the head up. Way in the back here, we've got a Krylophosaurus figure with the dark blue and orange coloring. And this figure comes with sound effects that happen when you move its tail around. Up next, let's see, let's go with this Ceratosaurus figure in the dark green and black coloring. And it's got a slide lever action at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. This right here is the Jurassic World Dominion Triceratops figure. It's got some unique coloring with the orange in the front, right next to the dark green, and then some lighter green along the back of its body. Plus, it has a roaring action when you press down on its back. Ooh, check it out. Here is a Therizinosaurus figure. This has some bright red and some soft blue coloring. Of course, it's got the huge claws on its hands and it has a really long neck and a bunch of small teeth in its mouth too. Over here, we've got a few flying dinosaurs. These are smaller figures. I believe that both of these are Pteranodon figures. This first one's got some cool reflective gold coloring on its head. The rest of its body is like a dark green color. And the second one is more of a grayish color. It still has some yellow on its face, but this one actually has a button on its back to flap its wings. Looks like we've got another big dinosaur in here. This one looks quite a bit different. It's still made by Hasbro, but it's a different toy line than the rest. But check it out, it still has a chomping action when you press down on its body. Looks like we've got yet another T-Rex in here. This one is the dark green with black detailing along the top and is one of my personal favorites. Its limbs are adjustable just like the other T-Rexes and it has the jaw chomping action. Check it out, here is the second Therizinosaurus of the collection and this one is made by Hasbro for the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got a bunch of cool feather texturing all over its body with the red stripe and it has a jaw chomping action that you can activate by pressing the button on its tail. Oh look at this, way down here we've got a Lego collection. Uh, this might be a Carnotaurus I think because it's got those two huge horns at the top of its head. It's got some pretty crazy coloring overall though. It's got bright blue, some neon orange. Check out those yellow eyes too. Here's another Pteranodon figure, but it is way larger than the ones that we saw earlier. You can unfold its wings to show the full wingspan and check out the detailing along its body, which is pretty neat. And it's got two action buttons on its back, one for the jaw and one for flapping its wings. I've got another big Lego dinosaur in here. This one might be a Baryonyx, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what dinosaur species you think this is. In the back here, we've got a good old Ankylosaurus figure. This one has the blue top with the spikes all over the top and the sides and a slide lever action to swing its tail around. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure. This is a basic series Dilophosaurus, so there's no action button, but it's still got some ginormous frills in the front with a huge yellow crown and a dark red body with adjustable limbs. Looks like I've got some Velociraptor figures in here as well. Let's check out these three. This first one is an extreme battle damage Velociraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Check that out, you can turn it on and off. There's also the Velociraptor blue figure with opposable legs, arms, and mouth. And there's this crazy looking Velociraptor that has some really cool detailing along its back. Plus, it's got some golden eyes too. Up next, we've got the Majingasaurus. This figure is a little bit bigger than the Velociraptor figures and it's got some yellow, blue, and green on its body. Plus, you can use the tail to move the head around. In the back here, we've got what looks like a Brachiosaurus figure with dark red and some yellow detailing along with the black too. Check out those green eyes. I found another Velociraptor figure. This is an older figure. It's got the tan with the green striping, but unfortunately there is no action button on this figurine. 
Here's another Velociraptor figure from the same era. This one has the dark green with black stripes on the top and the yellow underbelly. But once again, sadly, there is no action button on this figure. <laughs> Check out this weird looking dinosaur. This figure is designed to hang on to your finger and it actually is battery powered with sound effects and with movement. Over here we've got the Sauropelta with the light green and dark green coloring. Here is the Zunoceratops figure with the yellow and gray coloring. It's got the two huge horns on its head. There's also a few patchy Cephalosaurus figures in here. This one has battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And the other patchy Cephalosaurus actually has a headbutting action when you move its tail. Here's another winged figure. This is a Dimorphodon. It's got the fiery red and orange coloring on the underside of its wings and the dark green along the top. Oh, look at that. There's actually another Sauropelta figure right here. This one has the brown and clay red coloring. Next up is a small figure. This is a Gallimimus, although it's got some pretty detailed coloring running along its back all the way to its head. Here's a Stigimaloc figure. It's got a hard head just like the patchy Cephalosaurus, but it's also got some spikes coming out right behind it. And on this figure, you can use the tail for the headbutting action too. Right over here, we've got an Atrociraptor figure. This one is tan and it is in the stealth pose. You can see it's crawling along the ground. This one looks to be like a Kentrosaurus figure. This one was not made by Hasbro, so it looks quite a bit different, but it's still got those iconic horns coming right outside of the shoulders. Up next is a miniature Dilophosaurus figure. Check out that super bright and colorful frills. Now here's a teeny tiny dinosaur figure. This is from the Snap Squads. And this is a Triceratops figure. Look at that, it's even got teeth on the inside. That's a nice little detail. And the last figure in this first bin is the Elephrosaurus figure. I think this one's pretty recent, came out in 2023. Let's dive into our second bin of dinosaur figures right here. But before we do, let's check out these officially licensed Jurassic World Heroes of Gujitsu figures. This first one is a Mosasaurus figure. It's got a chomp attack action. It looks like it has fish on the inside or something like that from that picture. So let's open it up and check it out. Here we go, and wow, this thing is extremely squishy and stretchy. It also comes with that chopping action, so you can snap its jaw shut, just like that. But the biggest feature of this is its gooey body. Super squishy, it's still got the texture like a normal Mosasaurus, and it's got its fins as well. But when you squeeze it, let's see what's on the inside of it. All right, there is fish bones in there. That is super crazy looking. Wow, they're just floating in all that goo. It's pretty relaxing to squeeze, actually. That's really cool that they actually put something inside the goo, so you can only see it when you expand it. The other Gujitsu figure that I got for Jurassic World is this Pyroraptor. It also has the chomp attack action, and instead of having goo on the inside, this one is super stretchy. So let's open it up and see. Oh yeah, this one feels totally different from the Mosasaurus. It's actually like pretty hard. You can squeeze it and it moves, but it doesn't have the goo on the inside like the other figure does. You can open and close its mouth for that jaw chomping action. And this one has some feather texturing on its body as well. It has some huge feathers on its arms. Now this figure is supposed to stretch really far, so let's see if we can stretch it. Oh, look at that. There are some different things on the inside of even this figure. Wow, that is super stretchy. It's really strong and hard to stretch. Let's see if we can find out what is that. It looks like feathers are on the inside of this figure. All right, let's get back to our regular figures. I've got an Albertosaurus figure right here with the green and the orange striping on the side. It also has a chomp button on its tail too. Here is the Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure. It's got the classic gray coloring with a little bit of brown and the spikes all over its body. And of course, some really cool sound effects. Here's a pretty new figure. This is the Siamosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It stands on all four legs. It has some pretty cool paint detailing on its body. It's got a huge spine just like a Spinosaurus and a jaw chopping action by pressing the button on its tail. 
Back here is a Carnotaurus figure with a dark brown and black coloring. It's got a little bit of battle damage right on its nose and it has posable legs, arms, and a tail and you can use the tail to move the head around too. Check it out, here is the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. This one is way more poseable than the standard figures. And I think this one looks a bit more lifelike because of how detailed it is. Look at all that wear and tear on its horns. That's really cool. This is the Tarbosaurus figure. It's got a mostly dark body. It has some black striping along its back. And the brightest part is its neck and its chin. It's also got these really cool huge spines that run all the way down its tail. And of course, a button on its tail for the chomping action. <laughs> Up next is the Carcharodontosaurus figure. This figure too has some spikes running down its back to its tail, and it also has an action button for the chomping action too. Plus, all of its limbs are posable too. From Jurassic World Dominion, this is the Ragasaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than some of the other predator figures, but it has a really cool chomping action when you press down on its body. This is an aquatic dinosaur. I believe it's called the Kronosaurus. It's got some huge teeth in its mouth as well as some teeny tiny ones. And it has an action button on its back so you can swing its head back and forth. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure. This one looks quite a bit different though. It's a lot more bright in color. Its spikes on its back are this gold color. The horns are also a bright color too. And it has this really big action button on its back for chomping. Way back here is an herbivore. This is the Cynoceratops with the light green and the bright yellow coloring. And this figure has a roaring action when you press down on its body. Oh, look at this. This is actually another Cynoceratops figure, but this one is in the gray and tan color. And instead of just a simple roaring action, it actually has a tail that moves the head around with sound effects. Here is the Parasaurolophus figure. It's mostly yellow, it's got some brown striping with two action buttons. One controls the head, moves it up and down, and the other button controls its tail. Check it out, we've got another Lego Jurassic World figure. This one, I believe, is a Brachiosaurus figure because it's got a huge body that walks on all four legs and it's got this really long and flexible neck. Pretty cool, it's got some cool slash detailing on its body and it's pretty large for a Lego figure. Next up is the Metriocanthosaurus figure in the yellow and green color. Let's check out that chomp action. Back here is a model T-Rex figure. Looks like it's an orange color. It's got some really cool muscle detailing all over its body. And here's another Lego figure. This one though is a T-Rex. Check that out. It's a dark brown color. It has some darker brown detailing all over its body. And you can even open and close its jaw. This next figure is not a dinosaur. It is actually a human inside one of those balls from the Jurassic World movie that you can drive around in. It's pretty cool. This is a baby Brachiosaurus figure with the gray and purple-ish color on the top. Well, let's check out these Stegosauruses next. I've actually got quite a few in here. This first one is a newer one. It's got the brown, green, and clay red coloring. And it has the action when you press down on its spine, it swings its tail back and forth. Down here somewhere, up oh, here it is, is the baby version of that Stegosaurus. It's got the same type of coloring with the green and the clay red on the top, but it is a whole lot smaller. Look at that, even its tail is really small. Let's see what other Stegosaurus is. Here's one. This Stegosaurus is brown, it's got some tan and green, and this one has two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button does the classic tail swinging action. And we've got another Triceratops in here. This one is in a gray and darker gray color. It's got the light pink underbelly. And of course, the tail slashing action. Oh, look at that. I've actually got another one with identical coloring in here. So this one is actually just a twin. Here's another large dinosaur. This one's actually really cool. This is a Velociraptor Beta figure. And it's pretty cool because it has some lifelike movements can have it walk side to side like this, and you can even have it chomp by pressing down on its body. 
I've got another Ankylosaurus figure in here. This one has the gray, green, and brown coloring, plus a button for the tail swinging action. I see a few Baryonyx figures in here. This first one, I believe, is Baryonyx Grim or Limbo, maybe? I actually can't remember their name. It's got the bright green coloring and the action button on the top for chomping its jaw. Here is the second Baryonyx figure in here with totally different coloring. I love the bright blue coloring along the top of its head and the slide lever action for the roaring and sound effects. And the third Baryonyx is right here. It's got battle damage on its neck and on its leg. And of course it has a button for the chomping action. Looks like I've got a few Ceratosaurus figures in here as well. This first one I think is from Camp Cretaceous. It's got the iconic red coloring running all the way up to its head with the slide lever action for roaring and sound effects. And this other Ceratosaurus is actually a Hammond collection figure. It's got some pretty similar coloring to the Ceratosaurus we just saw, but its limbs are way more poseable, and I think there's a bit more texturing on its skin too. Hidden in the bottom here is another Carnotaurus figure. This one is from the Fallen Kingdom collection, so it's actually a bit older than a lot of these other figures. And it's got the button on its back for the chomping action. Let's see, what's next? Let's go with this Allosaurus figure. We haven't seen that many Allosauruses in this collection, but this one is probably one of my favorites because of its color. Plus, it's got those little spikes on the top of its head that run down its back. And of course, a slide lever action for roaring with sound effects. Here's another ginormous winged dinosaur. I believe it's actually another Pteranodon figure. Once its wings are opened up, you can see that there are two buttons, one for its mouth and one to flap her wings. This next figure is the Rowdy Roars Atrociraptor. Let's press that button on the top of its head. Oh, you know what? Here's another Atrociraptor figure, and I got this one pretty recently too. It has some really cool bright red coloring along its arms and on its shoulders, and it's got this interesting backpack tracker system on it too. Down at the bottom here, here's another one of those figures that fit on your finger. But just like that, they rest on your finger, and they have sound effects and movement too. Look at that, even its eyes blink. This next figure is a classic Triceratops figure. It's got some bright red coloring though, which is a cool feature. I've also got another Stegosaurus in here. It's got some pretty realistic coloring and some bright spines. Aww. Here is a very small Parasaurolophus figure. It's got some cool brown coloring with some lighter brown on the sides, and it looks like it has some tiny yellow eyes. <laughs> This next figure down here, I believe, is called a Protoceratops. This is a pretty weird looking dinosaur. It's got some bright coloring all over its body too. Up next, I think I've got a couple Herrerasaurus figures. This first figure is a battle damage one that you can open and close right on the side. And this other figure is not a battle damage edition, but it has some gray and white detailing. I've also got a bright Monolophosaurus figure right here, and it has a chomping action that's activated by moving the tail. This one's pretty cool. This is actually a Dilophosaurus without the frills, which as it turns out may be fictional from the Jurassic Park movie. I've got a few more Velociraptor figures in here. This first one looks a lot like Velociraptor Blue, but it's not made by Hasbro. Still got the iconic blue stripe running down its side. And there's also this similar looking Velociraptor. It's got some white with some black spots on its body and a little bit of red along the top of its head. And this one is made by Mattel. It features some bright red coloring with purple stripes running down the sides. All right, only a few left. This one, I'm actually not sure what it is, but it looks like it's holding an egg. Maybe it's stealing it. Comment below if you recognize this dinosaur species. Here's a crazy looking dinosaur that walks on all four legs. It looks kind of like a Sarcosuchus, but I'm actually not sure. And this figure is really feathered. Check out all that feather design on its tail and on its arms and its back. And it's got a pretty wild looking head too. 
Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we are checking out a huge collection of Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Indominus Rex. First up, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Super Colossal T-Rex. This figure has a dark brown side and black top with a lighter underbelly. And it's got adjustable arms, legs, and a tail. And up front, I can tell that the plastic is a bit softer on its neck. The rest of its head is a hard plastic and you can open it up way wide, and you're able to actually swallow smaller dinosaurs down to the stomach compartment. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got another super colossal figure. This is an Indominus Rex. It has the classic light gray body, and is pretty detailed with all the spikes and the spines. It's got some spines up there, it's got some behind its elbows, it's got those super long claws on its hand. And just like the T-Rex, you can adjust the arms, the legs, you can swing the tail around. But on this figure, you can also twist the neck too. Here is the next figure. It's another super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one has the light orange body with a lighter underbelly. And just like the Jurassic World Dominion Tyrannosaurus Rex, the neck is actually a little bit softer. It's like a softer plastic right there and you can move the arms, the legs, the tail, just like the other ones. And of course, this one has the stomach compartment for eating smaller dinosaurs. And we've got some brand new figures that we can open up first before we dive into the rest of them. This one is the PNSO Wilson the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is super detailed. Look at all that texturing on its body, all the various shades of colors. It's like lighter right here, there's darker shades. These are a lot more detailed than a lot of the Jurassic World figurines. But unfortunately, they're not as poseable. Usually you can only move their jaw. All right, let's dig in. This first Tyrannosaurus Rex is the Battle Damage Edition. It has the light orange body. You can see that there's scrapes and slashes all over its body, even on its face and nose. And it has a fully poseable body, plus the button at the top of the head for chomping. Over here, we've got an Indominus Rex, the Extreme Battle Damage Edition. With this one, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off. That's so cool. Each time that you press that button, it delivers a roar sound effect too. On the rest of the figure, the arms and the legs are fully adjustable. And there's a button at the tail that controls the jaw. Here we've got the epic roaring Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is light brown on the sides, dark brown on top, and the lighter underbelly. And the coolest part is the roar and shaking sound effects. Over here is the Jurassic World Chompin' Indominus Rex. This is a bit of an older figure. It's got the hard plastic on the back and the rubber on the neck and head. You don't see that too often nowadays. And for the chomping action, you pull down on the arms to open and close its mouth. I believe this figure is the Bite and Fight Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has one big special feature. Press this button on its back and it does a tearing action. Swings its head around and closes its mouth real fast. And there is also a secondary button that swings its tail back and forth. I believe this figure is a destroy and devour Indominus Rex, but you'll notice that it has some custom coloring. So. This definitely does not look like your typical Indominus Rex. And this figure really pops out on my display shelves. My favorite part being those green eyes right there. Next up is the Stomp and Escape Tyrannosaurus Rex. As you can tell by the name, it has two features. The first, when you press this button on its back, it'll escape from its face cage. Just like that. And the second feature is Stompin'. When you twist the tail, it stomps its feet up and down. Comes with sound effects too.
Here we have a classically colored destroy and devour Indominus Rex. This figure is pretty detailed over its body. It's got tons of spikes on its back. It's got those spines right along its neck. It's got some unique coloring along its eyes, right next to those orange eyes. And this figure has a few different features. First, when you bend the legs forward, it'll actually point its head down. And when you bend them back, it'll point its head upwards. Secondly, there's a button on its back that's used for slashing. And finally, there's a button on its tail for the chomping and roaring. Here is an extreme battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure is pretty poseable. You're able to move the arms, the legs, and swing the tail around, as well as adjust the neck and open and shut the jaw by hand. But the coolest part is the battle damage that you can turn on and off, just like the Indominus Rex that we saw earlier. And you can see it on both sides. Next up, we've got the Extreme Chompin' Tyrannosaurus Rex. This figure has a more gray-brown coloring on the sides with a darker brown on top and the light underbelly and is adjustable just like many of the other figures. And it has the button at the top of its head for chomping and roaring. Here is another Indominus Rex, but this does not look normal. This is a hybrid Indominus Rex. So this one has some pretty awesome and unique coloring along its body. It's the only Indominus Rex to have red on its body, I believe, as well as the gold on its arms and its belly. And this dinosaur has a few features. First is a hidden button that activates its spikes on its back. Secondly is the chopping action, which you activate by moving its arm. Here we have, I believe, another extreme chomping Tyrannosaurus Rex. This one though has the orange body with the brown coloring on the top with the lighter underbelly. And of course, that chomping button right on the top of its head. This is the Stomp and Chomp Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has the typical orange body with the brown top and lighter underbelly. And what I really like about this figure is that you use the tail to control the head and the whole front of the body for chomping and for roaring too. Here we've got a model Indominus Rex, which I don't see that many of. But what I like about these models is that they're so much more intricately colored and textured. Check out those spikes on its back. They're so small on all those little spines and all those little horn things right along its back all the way to its tail. And just like many other model figures, you can't adjust the arms and legs. Only the mouth can open and close in these. But these sure look epic on a display shelf. Next up is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is one of the few Tyrannosauruses that I have that are this cool green color with the black detailing on the top. It has that same button on the top of its head for chomping. And this T-Rex actually came with a baby T-Rex in the same pack. So these came together. Here is a smaller Indominus Rex figure with the battle damage on the side that you can open and close. And while most of its body is that iconic gray color, it does have some gray green coloring along the top, which is different from most of my other Indominus Rex figures. Plus, this figure comes with a chomping action when you move the tail. Way at the bottom here, I've actually got the T-Rex anatomy kit. Now I am missing a few pieces to it. It's really easy to misplace these, but it's really cool that you can take this apart to check out all the different body parts within. You can take the ribs out, you can see this muscle on its tail and the bone behind it, and you can even take apart this foot right here and see what's underneath. How cool is that? This is the Bashers and Biters Indominus Rex figure. This is from the old Jurassic World toy line, and it has similar coloring to the rest of them, a little bit darker gray on top, got the battle damage on the side, and of course you can move the tail to control the face. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex figure, but I believe it is a juvenile or even a baby T-Rex. You can see it's got the mouth restraint on, because the humans are actually healing its leg. It's got a broken leg, so it's got this bandage around it. And this figure is very adjustable too. You can move all the limbs, even at the elbows. 
and of course you can move the tail and twist the head around and even open and close the mouth. This is the feeding frenzy Indominus Rex. This is a lot smaller than most of the Indominus Rex figures, but it has quite a large face to it. And it has a few features. The first is when you press this button on its nose, get some sound effects. And the second is when you move the tail, it opens its mouth to eat, and then you can press down on its tongue to clamp shut its jaw. And last of all, I've got a few small figures in here. Got a Lego Indominus Rex figure, which is pretty cool. It's the only Lego figure that I have in this bin, at least. We've also got some miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex figures from Jurassic World. This one is green with a light underbelly. And the second one here is brown with a light underbelly as well. And I also have these two Indominus Rexes in this bin. The first one is white with silver, reflective silver on its top. And you can open and close the jaw. And the second one is a clear Indominus Rex. You can't move any parts on this figure, but I think it's pretty cool that it's see-through. Today we're checking out a huge Jurassic World Predator vs. Predator collection where I'll be comparing many of these dinosaurs side by side. Plus, I've got a new Jurassic World Dino Trackers that we'll be checking out as well. But let's get started with this Scorpios Rex and this Seatz Micarera. The Scorpios Rex figure is quite a bit larger than many of the Jurassic World figures I have. It has these huge claws on its hands, comes with sound effects and the two action buttons on its back plus those huge poisonous quills as well. And let's check out the Seatz Mika Rerum. It's got an orange body with some brighter coloring. It's got a bunch of spikes running along the top of its head, and you can use its tail to move its head back and forth and to chomp its jaw as well. Next up, we've got the giant T-Rex figure and an Endoraptor figure. This T-Rex figure is actually a bit older. It's got a rubbery neck and the rubbery tail. This figure has a huge chomping action when you lift up its head, it roars, and then when you lift its tail, it chomps down with some sound effects too. And this Endoraptor figure is pretty awesome as well. It's a bit bigger than many of the Endoraptor figures I have, and it has a really cool feature where you can move the tail to twist its torso around, move its neck, and there's even buttons to control its arms and its jaw as well. And check it out, even its eyes light up too. Next up, we've got another T-Rex, but this one is a green color versus a Carnotaurus figure. The T-Rex is a bit bigger and it has some cool black detailing right along the top. Plus, you can adjust the neck to look in all sorts of directions and use the button at the top of its head to open and close its jaw too. And the Carnotaurus over here, although it's a little bit smaller, it has some pretty awesome detailing as well. It comes in the dark brown color, it has the gray underbelly, and it has a tail that moves its head side to side and up and down and opens and closes its jaws too. Next up in Predator versus Predator, we've got a Suchomimus and right over here we've got the Irritator. The Suchomimus is a little bit larger and it has blue and yellow coloring along its body. It's got a huge spine running down all the way down its tail and it has an action button to chomp its really long and narrow snout. And let's check out this Irritator dinosaur as well, which actually looks somewhat similar as the Suchomimus. They've both got tall spines running along their back and long, narrow snouts too. You can open and close the mouth manually, and you can actually use the tail to move its head around too. Down here, we've got an Albertosaurus versus a Rajasaurus. The Albertosaurus here has some extreme battle damage on its side that you can close. See its ribs that you can open and close, and you can close its skin entirely. Plus, the rest of its body is very adjustable as well. You can even move the neck around to look in all different directions too. And the Rajasaurus is an entirely different color and a little bit smaller than the Albertosaurus. It's got dark blue and some white. It's got some huge spikes running along the top of its head, and it has an action that when you press down on its back, 
It chomps. Here we've got two T-Rexes from different eras of Jurassic World. This first one is more recent. It's from Jurassic World Dominion. And this is an older one. I think it's from Camp Cretaceous, actually. Comparing the size, I think the Camp Cretaceous one is a little bit larger. This one is really cool because you can use the tail to move the head up and down and open and close the jaw too. And the Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex, although a little bit smaller, has some really cool coloring. It's like a darker brown orange color. Plus it has the extreme battle damage right on the side that you can turn on and off with the click of a button. Here are some winged dinosaurs. This one right here is a Quetzalcoatlus, and this orange one is a Pteranodon. The Pteranodon is a lot more simple in color. It's mostly this brown-orange clay coloring. It has some yellow detailing on the wings, and you can open and close the mouth manually as well. The Quetzalcoatlus is a bit more of a sophisticated toy. You can actually fold the wings closed all the way, and there's action buttons on its back to flap the wings and to chomp its jaw as well. Plus, it's got some really cool coloring as well. And I think that the Quetzalcoatluses are much larger than Pteranodons in real life. We've got a huge dinosaur figure right here and also a smaller one right on top of it. This huge one is a Mosasaurus and this smaller one is a Sarcosuchus dinosaur. This huge Mosasaurus figure is an ocean dinosaur, so you'll see this in the water. I'm sure you recognize it from the first Jurassic World movie. And it's probably two or three feet long from the tip of its mouth all the way to the tail. And you can adjust all the fins and open and close its mouth. Now this Sarcosuchus figure is a lot smaller and it may not have lived entirely in the water, but I believe that these dinosaurs lived by the water and might have even hunted in it as well. It's got this super long and narrow snout and it looks a lot like an alligator in a way. It looks like it has some armor plating all along its back too. And you can use the tail to open and close the jaw. Next up, why don't we open up this Jurassic World Dino Tractors. I believe it's pronounced Dryptosaurus or Dryptosaurus. It's looking pretty cool. Let's open it up. This Dryptosaurus figure is pretty cool and it's around the same size as many of my Baryonyx figures. It's got some green that runs along from its arms, down its back, all the way to its tail, where it's got a ton of really interesting spikes. And it's got some dark brown from its feet that trails up all the way on its back, all the way to its head, where it has some dark blue right along its mouth as well. And let's see what else. You can move the arms up and down and outwards. You can twist the tail and move the legs too. There is the barcode scanner right there on its back that you can open and close. And it's got an action button right here on its back. It's a pretty small one, but you actually push it side to side and it rotates its head for different sound effects and for chomping too. And let's compare it against a Velociraptor from the Amber Collection. This Velociraptor is bright green. It's got the striping along its back. And like many of the Amber Collection figures, is super poseable and adjustable as well. These figures are really cool. Next up is a Baryonyx versus a Cryolophosaurus figure. They're about the same size. I think the Cryolophosaurus is a little bit bigger and heavier. This dinosaur is pretty muscular. Look at those huge legs. It's got a huge torso as well, and it's got some really cool crown embellishment on the top of its head. And best of all, you can use the tail to move the head around in a really lifelike way. Let's compare that to the Baryonyx figure, a little bit thinner probably a faster runner. It's got some smaller legs and arms. It's got a variety of different colors along its body and it's got these slide lever action for different chomping movements. Here is a Ceratosaurus versus what I believe is a Yangchuanosaurus. They're about the same in size. I think the Ceratosaurus is a little bit bigger. The Yangchuanosaurus has a really long neck though. Let's check out the Ceratosaurus. It's got some different tones of brown. It's also got that bright red as usual, an action button on its back to open and close its jaw, and you can move its arms and its legs and its tail as well. The Yangchuanosaurus figure 
is totally different in color. It's green, yellow, and blue. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the head around. Sounds like the sound effects are a little bit broken though. This figure has even smaller front arms. I think those might be even smaller than a T-Rex's front arms, and definitely smaller than a Ceratosaurus's front arms as well. Over here, we've got another Amber Collection Velociraptor figure versus a Baryonyx figure. The Baryonyx is a little bit larger than the Velociraptor figure. It has a longer neck and maybe a longer tail, I think. And it's got an action button on its back that you can use to open and close the jaw. Check out that super bright orange detailing right on the top of its head, too. And it's got a long and a narrow snout. The Velociraptor, on the other hand, doesn't have quite as long of a mouth, and it's a bit more wide. Its eyes are a lot larger. And since this is from the Amber Collection, it is very poseable and adjustable, too. Way more poseable than that Baryonyx figure. <laughs> This is a Carcharodontosaurus figure versus a smaller Indominus Rex figurine. Carcharodontosaurus is definitely a lot larger. It's got some bright yellow, orange, and brown coloring. It's got striping all the way down its neck and its back, and it's got a huge action button on its back for chomping. Look at that huge chomping action all the way down, and it's so fast you can hardly see it. This Indominus Rex figure is a bit older and a bit smaller. It's got the classic gray detailing with a bit more green gray coloring along the top, and this has some extreme battle damage on the side that you can open and close, which is really cool. And with this figure, you can move the legs and the arms, and you can use the tail to chomp the head. These are our last two dinosaurs of the bin. We've got another Ceratosaurus. This one is from the Hammond Collection versus a huge Velociraptor blue figure. The Ceratosaurus figure is a lot bigger in size in terms of its torso. Look at this difference between this skinny Velociraptor and this huge Ceratosaurus figure. And since this is a basic Velociraptor blue figure, there's not a ton of detailing and you can only move the arms and legs. But with the Ceratosaurus, since it's from the Hammond Collection, has a lot more awesome detailing and coloring, and you can adjust the arms, the legs, the tail, and the head in all sorts of different poses. Today, I'm showing you my ultimate collection of Velociraptor versus Baryonyx versus Carnotaurus figures. Let's get started with these brand new ones that I just bought to add to this collection. First up, we've got Baryonyx Limbo from the Camp Cretaceous pack. Let's open it up. This is so cool. This is actually the first of this Baryonyx that I have in my collection. It's got a lime green body, got a darker green along the bottom of its back, and it's got some brown detailing on its neck all the way to the top of its head. You can move all the limbs and the tail on this figure, and there is a slide lever action for roaring and the sound effects. Next up, we've got the Velociraptor from the Jurassic World Attack Pack. Let's check it out. This Velociraptor has some pretty unique coloring. It's got a dark blue body and a dark red detailing along the top, which is pretty unique. I don't know that I have another figure colored like this. And here we've got another Velociraptor, but this is actually from the Heyman collection. Let's open it up and check it out. This Velociraptor figure is even darker than the one that we just saw. It's got a dark green body with brown detailing on the tail, all over the back on its legs, and it's still got the lighter underbelly all the way to the chin. And since it's a Hammond Collection figure, you'll notice that it is a much more poseable than a lot of the classic Velociraptor figures. You can move basically every limb on this figure. 
Let's dig into this bin now, and we're gonna start with the Velociraptors over here on the left. The first one here is Velociraptor Delta from the Amber Collection. You'll notice with all these Amber Collection figures that they are very poseable, just like the Hammond Collection figures. And Velociraptor Delta here has some bright blue coloring with a lighter underbelly. This is Velociraptor Blue from the Amber Collection. Very poseable, just like the last one. You can move the tail and all the limbs. And of course, it's got the iconic blue stripe all the way down the body on both sides. This, I believe, is Velociraptor Echo. This is also from the Amber Collection. It's got the light underbelly, a brown body with some darker striping, and the black top, too. The next Velociraptor from the Amber Collection is, I believe this one is called the Tiger Velociraptor? I can't quite remember. Let me know down in the comments if you remember. I also forgot to mention earlier that in all the Amber Collection Velociraptors, you can actually move this claw up and down, just like real life. This last Velociraptor from the Amber Collection is Velociraptor Charlie. This figure has a lime green body with darker green detailing all over its back and tail. It's got this headpiece attached to its head, and just like all the other ones, it is very poseable and adjustable, and you can stand it in any way you want on your shelf. Let's see what other Velociraptor figures we got in here. I've got these smaller ones. This bright red Velociraptor is actually spring-loaded on its legs, so you can spring it up into the air, which is really cool. It's also got some pretty bright and awesome coloring, too. This other Velociraptor is also spring-loaded in the legs, so you can spring it into the air. And it's also got some bright coloring too. And of course, I've got Velociraptor Blue in the smaller figure with battle damage on the side. Right over here, I've got some Jurassic Park Velociraptors. So these figures are some of the oldest in my collection. You can see the Jurassic Park tattoo on their legs on both of them, but they've both got some different coloring. This is an orange and red Velociraptor. And this one, which I'm sure you've seen before, is brown with the black striping all over its body. This Velociraptor is pretty normal looking. It's got the brown body, a little darker brown on the top. But my favorite part is that it's got some bright green eyes. This next Velociraptor figure is another spring-loaded leaping Velociraptor. This one is also super brightly colored. It's got the bright blue on the sides with the darker blue along the top. Here is another Velociraptor figure with muted colors. It's got the gray body with the dark blue detailing along the top and some soft orange eyes. This is another version of Velociraptor Blue, but this one is the spring-loaded leaping version. So just like the others that I've shown you, you can bend down on its legs and it'll spring up into the air if you let it go. And of course, it's got the iconic blue coloring. Here is a basic Velociraptor figure from Jurassic World. It's a lot larger, but the limbs cannot move as much, and it's not as versatile. Even the jaw cannot open and close. But it's still got some pretty cool coloring, the orange body, brown detailing, and yellow eyes. This is another basic figure from Jurassic World, but this is Velociraptor Blue. It's got the soft green-blue body with the iconic blue stripe down on both sides of its body and the yellow eyes. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot these super colossal figures right here. This first Velociraptor is black around most of its body, but it's got this brown striping down the sides with some yellow speckling that's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's also a little bit on its arm as well. It's got some super amazing colored eyes. And of course, this super huge jaw that you can open up all the way to feed it miniature dinosaurs down to its stomach compartment. Way back here, we've got the super colossal Velociraptor Blue figure. This super colossal figure is very similar to the Velociraptor that I just showed you. It's even got the same amazingly colored eyes. And of course, it's got the iconic blue stripe down both sides of its body. Pretty adjustable with its limbs. And of course, it's got the stomach compartment down from its throat all the way down to its stomach so you can feed it miniature dinosaurs. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for all our Velociraptor figures. Now let's move to the Baryonyx figures right here in the center. The first one is the Baryonyx figure from the Hammond Collection. So you'll see that this figure is very poseable and adjustable with all its limbs. Plus it's got a little more detail than most of the other Baryonyx figures. Next up, we've got the Baryonyx with the battle damage on its body. You can see a huge slash on its neck. It's got some on its leg as well and I think that's the only battle damage that's shown on this figure. But it's also got the button on its back for the chomping. 
This is an older Baryonyx figure from Jurassic Park. So this figure is a lot older. And as you can see, it is designed quite a bit differently, but it also has an action that when you move the leg back and forth, the head twists. This is a brighter Baryonyx. It's got a light gray body with white, dark blue, and bright blue detailing on the top of its head. And this figure comes with a slide lever action for different roars and sound effects. This next Baryonyx figure is similar to the one that I opened up at the very beginning of the video, but it has a slightly more forced green color and it has two tones of brown on the top. It's got the light brown in the back and the dark brown along its neck and then the light brown right along the top of its head once again. This Baryonyx figure came out during the Fallen Kingdom era. It's got the light brown body with the blue detailing along the top and the super bright orange along the top of its head and nose. Here is another Baryonyx figure from the Jurassic Park series. So this figure, once again, is a lot older. It has the bright yellow underbelly and some light brown with black specks along the top. And like the other Jurassic Park Baryonyx that we saw earlier, it has the action that when you move its leg, its head twists back and forth. Here is our final Baryonyx of the bin. This figure has a light brown side and underbelly. It's got the dark blue detailing all along the top from the tail to the head. And it's got the bright blue reflective coloring right along the top of its head and nose too. There's only one more dinosaur left in the bin and that is the Carnotaurus figures. Let's start with the super colossal Carnotaurus Toro figure. This figure has the iconic clay red sides with the lighter underbelly and the brown top. It's got the two huge horns on the top of its head. It's got a little bit of battle damage on the right side of its face. And of course, it's got a huge jaw that you can open up all the way to feed it miniature dinosaurs. This Carnotaurus figure is from the Fallen Kingdom era. It's got some darker red coloring with some purplish coloring along the top. And this Carnotaurus has a different action button than all the rest that I'll show you. It has a chomping action that moves its neck as well. This, I believe, is the Control and Conquer Carnotaurus. It has a much darker red, pretty much brown coloring along its body. It's got a gray underbelly and a dark brown top. And with this figure, the tail controls the neck so you can twist it back and forth, as well as a button on its tail for chomping. This next Carnotaurus, I believe, might be from Camp Cretaceous, but I can't quite remember. It's got a lighter red and slightly orange coloring along the side with the brown top and the gray underbelly. And this figure also has the tail that controls the head, as well as the button for chomping. I've also got some smaller Carnotaurus figures in here that are not from Jurassic World, but are a bit more generic, but they differ quite a bit more with the coloring. You can see that this one's got some green coloring with it. It's still got the iconic horns though. And this figure has some bright orange along its face. You won't see that with the Jurassic World figures. And this figure looks a bit more like Jurassic World with the red and the spines but this figure has some ginormous horns on the top of its head. That's really cool. Here we've got the Carnotaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's even got the broken horn on the top of its head. This figure is colored entirely different too. It's got the dark green body with the orange detailing along the top. So it looks like they started to mix it up for the new Jurassic World Dominion movie. And last of all, we've got the Jurassic World Chompin' Carnotaurus figure. This figure looks more like a baby Carnotaurus in a lot of ways. It's got some huge eyes that you can actually blink with by pressing the button on the top of its head. And it's got a button on the bottom of its tail for a chomping action.
Today we're going to be checking out a collection of some of my scariest carnivore dinosaurs from biggest to smallest and we're going to be putting them up over here to check them out side by side. So let's get started with the biggest one, the Indominus Rex. This figure is absolutely massive. It is larger than a lot of my T-Rex figures and this is actually the battle damage edition. See it turns red when you press the button, which is really cool. Plus. The rest of the body is very adjustable. You can move all its arms, its legs, you can adjust its neck, and it even has a button on its tail to activate the jaw. So let's go ahead and set the Indominus Rex down at the edge right over here. Moving on, let's see what the next largest dinosaur is. Probably the Giganotosaurus. This is another super large figure. It's got the green body with the black detailing all over, and it has a few actions actually as well. The first action is a button on the top of its tail that activates the swinging action with its entire upper torso. And there's also a button beneath its tail to activate just the jaw alone. All right, let's put this Giganotosaurus down right next to the Indominus Rex. And look at the size difference even between those two as well. That's pretty crazy. All right, next up, let's see. I bet it's one of the T-Rexes and it's probably the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure has some awesome coloring and shading and is the most poseable out of basically all my T-Rex figures. And an interesting feature of the Hammond collection is the realistic parts of its mouth. It's got these flaps on its side that are rubber, so they actually move around pretty realistically. The tongue is also rubberized as well. Let's put this Hammond collection T-Rex right next to the Giganotosaurus. All right, I bet the next biggest one is this other T-Rex figure. This is a Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. It's got some brand new coloring. It's got the orange brown color and some gray detailing on the top. And this is actually an extreme battle damage T-Rex. You can press the button to reveal the damage on its side, just like that Indominus Rex over there. So since this is the next biggest T-Rex, let's put it down right next to the Hammond Collection T-Rex. All right, looking pretty good so far. Next up in size is this Allosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This is the largest Allosaurus figure that I have, and it actually has some battle damage on the side. Let me show you that. Right here, you see it's hidden completely right now, but then you can click it down to reveal the ribs, and then you can even lift those up to reveal the intestines inside. This is really cool, and the only Allosaurus that I have that can do that. Plus, it has an action button on its back to activate the jaw. Let's put this Allosaurus down right next to the extreme battle damage T-Rex. Let's see, what's next biggest in size? I think it might be this Endoraptor right here. This thing's pretty large. It's got the all black body with the iconic gold stripe down its side. And this one actually has a few actions. You can see there's a little button on its tail right there to activate its arms. And there's a button at the bottom of its tail to activate its jaw too. All right, let's set this Endoraptor down next to the Allosaurus. That Allosaurus is quite a bit larger. All right, let's keep digging. I think this Carnotaurus might be the next largest size. It's got some battle damage on its nose and it is the darker brown version of the Carnotaurus. And it has the action button on its tail to activate the jaw as well. Let's set it down. You know what? I think it might be larger than the Endoraptor, so let's go ahead and have them switch places real quick. There we go. That's looking better. Over here, we've got another Carnotaurus figure, but this one is smaller than the one that I just showed you, and it is a bit more brightly colored. It's a brighter red, it has the light underbelly, and then the black detailing on the top, and it has an action button on its back instead of its tail to activate the jaw. All right, let's set it down right next to the Endoraptor. Let's see, I think the next biggest carnivore in this collection is a Tarbosaurus. And this is definitely a scary looking carnivore. Check out that red underneath its chin and those red eyes too. And all those spikes, those are massive. Let's put this down right next to the Carnotaurus. Check out all those dinosaurs we have so far. Super cool. All right, let's see, next in size, Maybe this other Allosaurus figure right here. This Allosaurus has a slide lever action on its back, so you get a bunch of different sound effects with it. 
can get a growl all the way to a roar. All right, let's set this dinosaur down right next to the Tarbosaurus. And it is quite a bit smaller than the Tarbosaurus. Next up, I think, is the Giganotosaurus. This is the Sound Surge Giganotosaurus, so a whole lot smaller than the one that we saw earlier, but it has the same coloring and detailing, and it has sound effects that you can hear that you can activate by pressing this button up top. All right, let's set it down right next to the Allosaurus. They're actually pretty similar in size. So it might be a little hard to tell who's larger, but I think it's still the Allosaurus. Next, I think, is a Pyroraptor figure. This is the new Jurassic World Dominion version, and it is the basic version as well, so you can't open and close the jaw, but you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail a bit. Let's set this down right next to the smaller Giganotosaurus figure. <laughs> Next up in size in the Scary Carnivore Collection is the Mega Raptor. This thing has some super bright coloring. You can tell that it is a feathered dinosaur. You can see some feathers on its legs, on its tail, on its arms. It's pretty cool. So let's set this down right next to the Mega Raptor. <laughs> next up is this slightly smaller Endo Raptor. A bit smaller than the earlier version that we saw, but it has the same coloring, and this one actually does not have any action buttons, but it is super poseable. Let's put this down next to the Mega Raptor. Next in size, we've got the basic Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. This has the white body with the brown striping all over and those bright red eyes. Let's put this down next to the smaller Endoraptor. Here is an Amber Collection Velociraptor. I can't remember which Velociraptor this is, but it has the brown coloring with the darker striping all over its body. Looks like we're running out of room on the edge there, so we're gonna create a new row right up in front here. Next is this much smaller Indominus Rex figure. This is an earlier version of the Indominus Rex compared to this one way over here on the edge, and look at that size difference too. And actually, I think this smaller Indominus Rex has a slightly more blue tone than the super large one. It's pretty cool. Let's put this down right next to the Amber Collection Velociraptor. For the next smallest scary carnivore, I've actually got this brand new one from Jurassic World Dominion. This one, I believe, is pronounced Aquilmosaurus. Let's open it up. So this is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur, and it's actually an extreme battle damage edition that you can see on the sides. Just click this button, and there you go, you reveal the damage underneath. Plus, you can pose its neck, and I think you can even open and close its mouth, too. There we go, that's pretty cool. Let's put this down next to the Indominus Rex. The next up in size of scary carnivores is this extreme battle damage Pyroraptor. Just like the dinosaur that we just saw, there's a button on top that activates the battle damage. Plus, the rest of its body is poseable as well. And check out the size difference from this Pyroraptor to this basic Pyroraptor right there. A huge difference in size. Let's put it down right up front here. All right, now we're getting down to the really small ones. Here is a super small Atrociraptor figure. It has the same color as the basic Atrociraptor that we saw earlier, but is a whole lot smaller. So let's put this right next to the Pyroraptor. And I've actually got one more Atrociraptor figure in here with totally different coloring. This one is a bright orange with tan stripes on its body, and it's got some yellow evil looking eyes. So let's put this right next to the smaller Atrociraptor right in front. And it looks like we've got a few Velociraptor figures in here. This first one is Velociraptor Blue with the iconic blue striping down both sides of its body. So let's put Velociraptor Blue right next to the orange Atrociraptor. And this other Velociraptor that I've got in here is a brown and yellow Velociraptor. It's pretty similar to Velociraptor Blue, but different coloring and it's got some reflective green eyes. That's pretty cool. Let's set this one down. And finally, I've got some super small Jurassic World scary carnivore figures in here. Let's put these on the table and check them out one by one. I think the first largest is probably this Baryonyx. I think it's a Baryonyx figure. It's all green in color, so not a whole lot of difference with the coloring, but it's got a decent amount of texturing. Let's put this next to the larger Velociraptor. Next up in size, let's see, I think is probably this Velociraptor figure. 
This one has two different colors on it, even though it's so small. Oh no, actually three. It's got a pink tongue and the two tones of gray on its body. That's pretty cool. Let's put it down next to the Baryonyx. Next up is the Carnotaurus figure. I got this one pretty recently in a pack and you can actually open and close its mouth. Let's set this one down here. And last of all is this Baryonyx figure that actually came in the same pack as this little Carnotaurus. Let's put them side by side and it is a bit smaller. All right, we're finished. Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.